Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our Facebook Live. It is Friday again, <clears throat> and I hope you had a wonderful week. I hope you had a really nice Memorial weekend with um, lots of rest, restoration, time with family and friends. Today, we're going to, um, I want to give you an update on what is going on in our peptide world since there's been quite a bit of interest and I appreciate all of the feedback, all of the feedback that you all have provided on learning about peptides and what, uh, who are they for, what do they do, why am I so excited about them, why do I teach other physicians how to use peptides because there's just not enough of us that know how to do it yet. Um, we've had some very a, a very busy time, it's been a, a very pivotal time in peptide medicine with um, some changes from the FDA. I've already alluded to that a little bit, but we have a much better idea now um, what we're going to be doing going forward for now and in the immediate future and what options we may have um, for down the road a little bit further. So uh, let's start with some of the updates. So <clears throat> the FDA had um, some changes that they made on their um, terminology, what's allowed, what's not allowed in their regulation. Um, I'm going to kind of summarize this because it's, it's, it's fairly um, legal, technical government language, and um, I don't want to get into the nitty-gritty with that. But basically, you know what a peptide is. A peptide is a, a sequence of amino acids in a very specific sequence. Um, it can be anywhere. Um, the definition of what goes from a peptide to a protein has changed over the years. If you look back in some of the older textbooks, it's going to be even different than what it's um, been now for the last several years. Uh, anything from uh, less than 100 peptides. More recently, though, it's been anything 50, <clears throat> 50, I'm sorry, 50 amino acids or less was considered a peptide, and over 50 amino acids was considered a protein. And even within that, um, how they're put together and what their biological function does has been relevant. Well, now um, the FDA has determined, they, they, they were interpreting the term protein to mean um, an alpha amino acid polymer with a specific sequence that is greater than 40 amino acids is now going to be considered, 40 amino acids is now going to be considered a biologic, not a protein. And that's really where it gets into, it's a biologic and it's a drug. So there's also some other mention of between 40 and less than 100 and also some specific regulation on how the, well, how the peptide is synthesized, that terminology is also there. And then there's going to be some regulation on the bulk substances that the peptide manufacturers and the compounding pharmacies themselves are used, used to actually make the peptides. So um, this is, uh, it, it actually wasn't a lot of verbiage, but it was very powerful verbiage that ch that's going to affect what peptides are going to readily be available to us. And, um, and remember that the the FDA, they're, they're in the business of protecting the consumer. And um, so it's, it's not, that, um, that's not that, any, that peptides are unsafe. It's that they're, they're, this is just how it's going to be for us in the United States now. So there's some not so great news with that, but there's some really good news with it as well. And so what I wanted to go through was, well, what does that mean for us that um, use peptides, that we prescribe peptides for our patients? So I'm going to go through some of the peptides that will continue to be available. And then I'm going to mention uh, some of them that will not. There's a lot of them that will not be available, at least for now. And there's still the pathway that if, if there's um, a peptide that um, we would really like to be able to bring back, there is an option of doing an IRB that leads to an investigational new drug study. Uh, those are the things that are done all the time. They are expensive for just an independent practitioner to try to do something like that. And there's specific ways of going about doing that. But there will be peptides that will be studied under IRBs. I'm going to be involved with that. And so um, we're, we're, going to, we're going to go through the channels that the FDA has laid out to bring as many of the peptides that we've been able to use successfully back into um, use in clinic. So for now, though, let's focus on the ones that we will still be able to use. Um, and I'm going to remind you on a couple of these, you know, why this is such great news, because they're so effective and so powerful. Um, thymosin alpha-1. Thymosin alpha-1, we've been talking about that since I started doing 
the Facebook Lives and adding that into the Immune Boost Package that I was offering to patients for a reason. Thymus and Alpha-1 is an incredible peptide. It's a natural peptide that's made in the body in the thymus gland. And it is part of upregulating um, the part of our the T cell immunity in our body. We, our immune system is fairly complex. And we have, um, some of you may even remember this from science class, there's B cells and T cells. And the T cells are extremely important in surveillance, in viral infections. And that's why we started talking about this in the presence of COVID. They're very, very effective at helping your body upregulate its own protective mechanisms to rid you of um, especially viral infections, but infections in general, and um, through multiple different um, modalities and mechanisms. It's an amazing uh, peptide. It's very, very safe. It's been used very successfully. It's been very well studied as well. So thymus, some of the uses for thymus and alpha-1, like I mentioned, would be cold and flu season, viral infections, any kind of an infectious situation, even persistent infections like Epstein-Barr virus, Lyme. It's, it's something to be considered for that. Hepatitis, autoimmune conditions. All of the autoimmune conditions could benefit from thymus and alpha-1. There's actually some really promising and interesting research that was done with MS and thymus and alpha-1. And I have those papers um, it, if we ever get a chance to talk in person, um, you want to look at that because it's, it's very exciting. Inflammatory pain. Thymus and alpha-1 is, is extremely effective at reducing inflammation. Hence, you know, autoimmune symptoms, not only the condition, but the symptoms will improve. Inflammation goes down. <clears throat> and in general, for preventative health, to lengthen your health span, it's one of those peptides that can be used in, in that framework and in that way. Also, really interesting, thymus and alpha-1 can counter the thymus involuting properties of corticosteroids. What does that mean? Well, the thymus gland starts to become, you know, it's very, very uh, active, uh, robust during our young period. And then somewhere in our 20s, or they kind of cor they correlate it with after reproductive the optimal reproductive years are, it starts to kind of slow down, starts to involute, which means it starts to get kind of smaller, kind of folds in on itself. Some fat gets infiltrated in there, so it gets this fatty replacement, and it's just not as, as functional. And unfortunately, one of the side effects of corticosteroid use, which is things like people will say cortisone or um, prednisone, is that it can actually worsen that involution of the thymus gland. So thymus and alpha-1 can help counterbalance that if you're in a situation where steroids are, are, are part of your routine, um, routine medical care, whether it's getting, having to use prednisone um, for anything that you have to use prednisone for, or if it's frequent steroid injections, it's one of those wonderful things that you can do to help protect the destruction of your thymus gland. So, you know, I love that peptide. So, thymus and beta-4. We still have thymus and beta-4 also. So, thymus and beta-4 is also a thymic peptide. But it works a little bit differently. Um, thymus and beta-4, if you may not remember this, but in injury, in tissue injury, like let's say you're on the basketball court and you twist your ankle. You get a little injury like that or you over-rotate on the, on the golf swing. Thymus and beta-4 is upregulated by the thymus and beta-4 gene to start producing large amounts of thymus and beta-4 in response to injury. It is incredible. It's, it's also one of those pleiotrophic peptides that works in multiple different areas. Listen to some of these amazing benefits with thymus and beta-4. It increases the release and effectiveness of signaling molecules in the whole regenerative process. Animal research is copious on thymus and beta-4, with at least one study that I read on neuroprotection and neurorestoration after a traumatic brain injury. <clears throat> That's, you know, we think about stroke, traumatic brain injury, when, when the brain is injured, everything that we can do that can help recover that tissue and protect in the event that you, if you knew that a, that a head injury was uh, possible. Um, it's used extensively in athletes, and it is on the World Anti-Doping Association's list of not allowed, and this is because it significantly reduces the time to recovery 
Um, you know, so it, but it's wonderful for those of us that are not professionally competing but want to stay active. It's exceptionally good at preventing that delayed onset muscle soreness, especially for when we're not in the best shape that we would like to be, like after being in quarantine for a couple of months, we're trying to come out and, you know, get our regular routine back a little bit more. <clears throat> you can end up getting that, that soreness that happens one, two, or th even three days after exercise that was maybe a little bit more rigorous than what your body was ready for. So, um, <clears throat> Okay, it's allergy season here in Florida. Um, okay, so other things. Used clinically um, for hair loss, for erectile dysfunction, for sarcopenia, which is loss of muscle. Um, as we age, and in certain um, disease states, but mostly as part of what we age, you'll see that our muscle starts to just get smaller. It starts to be just less present. Thymus and beta-4 can help with treatment to make sure you maintain muscle mass. Osteoarthritis, tendinitis, inflammatory conditions and inflammatory diseases, wound healing, and even cardiac recovery after having a myocardial infarction or heart attack. I use it also as an augment in my clinic for regenerative procedures, whether it's PRP or cellular, to the joints, the spine, ligaments, tendon, all the things that we treat here. And it, it's just wonderful. So some of the other ones that we've already talked about that will still be um, available for us and are still available for us, in the growth hormone releasing um, peptide, the growth, we call them growth hormone releasing analogs. They sit in a receptor, whether it's the growth hormone releasing hormone or the ghrelin receptor, the growth hormone releasing, I don't want to get too technical, but these are the peptides that help our brain and our pituitary release more of our own growth hormone. And I've talked extensively about all of the benefits of growth hormone and why having, you know, <clears throat> therapeutic, better, optimal levels that if our own growth hormone, rather than taking, you know, if we have to take growth hormone, we have to. There are conditions where that has to be done. But these peptides are very effective at giving our tissues that extra boost. Tessamorelin um, is one of those peptides, and it is, um, it is on the market still. Right now, it is... Um, it is only um, by one name brand, and that may change in the next year. There may be more offerings. It's a very expensive peptide, and we're hoping that sometime in the future, we might have um, the option where it's not quite so expensive. I mean, we're talking about three to five thousand dollars a month potentially. Um, so that's pretty expensive for one peptide, but it's an amazing peptide, and it is still available. And it's been extensively studied. We know a lot about tessamorelin. It is an extremely powerful growth hormone secretagogue. It's a huge pulse of growth hormone that occurs in using tessamorelin. So it's a great product. Fortunately, we have another kind of came back for us. Um, Sermorelin was probably the, the first name, well-known name in peptides that is a growth hormone releasing hormone analog. So um, Sermorellin didn't have as all of the great things that we were getting from the ones that were not available anymore, like the CJC-1295 and the Ipamorellin. Those are not going to be available. I'll talk about what's not going to be available at least a little bit in a minute. But Sermorellin is a very solid product. It's very well studied and it is FDA approved. So we're going to have that as available, and it already is available. And they actually, the compounding pharmacy that I use is, has made a, 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 a combination product with sumerellin. Now, when the compounding pharmacy makes a combination product, it's because they've studied those two substances together, sitting in a bottle together, and they know that they stay stable and active and exactly how they're supposed to. We don't just combine <clears throat> things randomly on our own in a bottle. Um, and think that they're going to stay stable because that's a big issue with peptides. But uh, sumerellin and glycine product. So glycine uh, was shown to increase growth hormone release all by itself. So this product together is really exciting that we're going to have um, a growth hormone secretagogue so we can help our own pituitary release growth hormone that um, is a little bit more affordable. Um, it is kind of the in-between with the tessamorelin. So it increases growth hormone secretion from your own pituitary and promotes deep wave sleep, which is huge. I could talk about sleep all day long, how important it is. So um, wonderful that we have tessamorelin 
and now we have cimarillin and a glycine combination product. We're still going to have pentosin polysulfate. Yay! It's one of my favorite peptides. Pentosin is actually um, being studied for lots of different things, including um, maybe its, its ability to help with viral infections. But what we've been using it for um, really classically is cartilage loss and joint degradation. So pentosin actually not only um, helps restore the cartilage, it actually helps restore the articular cartilage, it also slows the breakdown of the cartilage. So it's, it's this incredible peptide and it's very pain relieving. It's, it's very in inflammation modulating. So it's knocking the bad inflammation down. And, um, and it, it has some, uh, some other wonderful things. There's some really interesting ongoing studies with pentosin. And um, so that's, I'm so happy that we're still gonna have pentosin. Um, the BPC-157 injectable is not available now, right now, and that's a peptide, as um, a lot of you know, I, I, I really love that peptide, I've used it extensively, but the good news is we're going to have very, very soon at least a, the B, a BPC product that's oral. Now, we've had oral BPC available to us, and we've used it successfully, with um, especially with the GI problems, because BPC is body protective compound, and it is a fragment of the body protective, the peptide is a fragment of the body protective compound that's actually made in human gastric juices. So it is you know, native in our body. And we're going to be able to use this though in an oral form. And um, that's very exciting. That's, that should be coming very, very, very soon. I have my finger tightly on the pulse of when that's going to be available to us. Um, so that's great news. I'm, getting, I'm not happy we're not going to have the injectable. That is something that we're going to be looking to study. Um, but for now, this is where we are. We also get to keep PT-141. That's bromelanotide. That is the, um, the libido, um, and you can use it to treat ED, libido for both men and women. Um, it's specifically for that purpose. And it is a, it is a fragment of the melanotan peptide. And um, <clears throat> so PT-141 is FDA approved and still will be available for us. So will melanotan, just not melanotan too. So melanotan, I haven't really talked about that much. Melanotan is a, um, the melanocortin system in the brain is, is very, it, it's, it's fascinating and, and complicated. So we're not gonna go down that road here, but the melanotan is the, um, is the peptide that does several things. Number one, it actually causes your body to, to produce a lot more melanin. So your skin gets tan and it can get very tan. Um, somebody like me, I'm pretty fair, and I live in uh, you know, southwest Florida, which is a uh, very high um, UV index. The sun is very hot, and there's a, you know, a period of time where you're at significant risk for sun damage. And um, even just walking across the parking lot some days, you can feel it just you know, very hot. And um, so I have been using melanotan every summer now for several years. And, um, and it's, it, it makes you tan, but it also has reduced that sun damage that I was starting to see accumulate in my skin. Um, it's in, it has a bunch of other uses too. Melanotan 1 and Melanotan 2 are both Melanotan peptides. Melanotan 2 has been, um, we're not gonna have access to that one. It's just, it was more potent. It was significantly more potent than Melanotan 1, but the Melanotan 1, is going to is going to be able to get get you there. Um, it's it has all the same properties. The other properties with melanotan are it's significantly anti-inflammatory. So, especially in chronic inflammatory situations and, and conditions, whether it's autoimmune or whether it's just a high level of inflammation from um, visceral fat or insulin resistance or whatever it might be, the melanotans are incredible at downregulating that inflammation and they promote better sleep just better sleep. So again, I go back to sleep because it's so important. <laughs> but melanotan, wonderful. Um, we can talk a little bit more about melanotans another time, but we still, melanotan one is something that is still gonna be available for us. Um, and it also has a libido effect, which that's why they isolated that kind of part of the molecule that causes the libido effect and made PT-141 out of it. So there are a whole bunch of others that are still on the list that are less commonly known. Um, but the things that we are not going to have access to now or in the immediate future are, unfortunately, 
some of the more exciting things like the 5-amino-1 MQ. I'm going to miss that one. We're not going to have LL37 for now. That was the you know, profoundly anti-infective peptide that I've talked about before. Um, we're not going to have some of these mitochondrial peptides where we're looking at trying to help the cell keep its, you know, its battery running so that we've got, um, it's a really interesting area of, of study with preventative health is to let the cell keep working properly, keep, you know, multiplying its mitochondria and allow that, I, I think of it as the battery to, to keep that energy coming out anyway. So, we're not going to have that. We're not going to have the CJC1295, which um, some of you who are familiar with peptides will know that that's you know, kind of sad because it's a great growth hormone releasing hormone. And we had a combination product with ipamorelin, and neither one of those are going to be available at this time, at least until they're under study. Um, we also are not going to have injectable BPC, and we're not going to have injectable copper GHK, which um, also very sad because... I, that peptide is incredible. It does so much, uh, so much for collagen production in all aspects, both for the skin, the joints. I mean, it's just incredible. And it has other properties. It was actually studied in colon cancer, and um, it's just an amazing peptide. Here's the good news. We still have topical copper GHK, and there was one study, at least one study that I read, that they demonstrated systemic absorption from, you know, of course, anything that's a transdermal, the effectiveness of getting it across the skin is all about the delivery mechanism. So, um, the, like the, the compounding pharmacy that, has, that is making those vehicles, they, they're looking at that to make sure that that's the, that's the case. You don't just combine it in, in, you know, in your own kitchen and hope that it gets across the skin. It's actually been tested that it gets across the skin. And this study is pretty exciting that you can put it on your skin, on your face, which is I, I put the copper creams on my face every day, and um, you're getting that systemic absorption. So um, at least from the, the places where I, I, I use for sure. And um, so copper GHK is still available, just not the injectable form right now. Um, we're also not going to have some of the neuro, we've already lost cerebral lysin, which was um, something that happened, uh, before, you know, some months and months ago. And um, where we're really a little deficient, which is really sad, is in the neuro recovery and the cognitive, preventing that, what we call cognitive impairment, mild cognitive impairment, which is that the beginnings of the forgetting and not being able to concentrate and, oh, what was that word again? Or what was that person again? Or, you know, that, that. Um, that can be very disruptive, and it's very common that happens at a certain point in our life. We were having excellent uh, results with certain peptides for that, and um, those have unfortunately um, not available right now. Vimesin beta-4 is still available, and, and so I would definitely be looking at that for sure. Um, but the cerebral lysin, not available. It hasn't been before this FDA um, situation happened, though. Dihexa, which is another one I really liked. C-Lank and C-Max, those are all um, not available right now. And um, Epitalin, which is one of my favorite all-time peptides, currently not available. There's some hope that we may have um, a way of reintroducing that peptide sometime in the near future, but for right now, we don't have it. And ARA290 is another one. ARA290 is fairly new, but it was showing great promise with neuropathic pain, and um, we're not going to have that one for now either. So, <clears throat> let's see. Um, now, for international peptide providers, so, you know, doctors who are, or providers who are outside the United States, does this FDA ruling affect your ability to um, prescribe peptides? <clears throat> and it doesn't. The FDA is, the, their purview is the, the United States of America. So if you're outside the country and, um, and are wondering if our rules are going to, what, you know, anything that's produced in this country is going to obviously be affected, but, um, but it does not affect outside the country for you to utilize these peptides where they're available, and I can help you with that if you're outside the country. Um, as far as my peptology certification training course, how does this affect that? The new FDA changes are going to just bring in another element to the course where, well, I'll be able to talk about if we're in the United States prescribing this is what we have available to us, and using those protocols, which um, being able to utilize things that you can get here, legally, safely, everything else, 
and then the international community will maybe have a little bit more um, options. And those, so the course is the course is the course. We'll have we'll make sure that our U.S. doctors have um, all the tools that they need with what we have. So, um, <clears throat> so uh, I wanted to share that with you. Now there's a, a bigger list of peptides that are not going to be allowed and a bigger list of peptides that will be allowed, but I at least wanted to cover some that we've been mentioning here and that are probably some of the most common um, for you to at least know about. <clears throat> so for physicians, um, I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be doing actually a webinar for physicians, um, kind of talking about my, my online course, Peptology for Repair and Recovery, so that you can see what's in that course and at least why, you know, what, if it might be relevant for you. Um, fill out the form on my contact page, uh, click Peptology Peptide Training um, at drheather.net slash contact. And um, you can get a, one of my free protocols with one of the peptides that's still available at drheather.net slash peptology protocol, uh, if you want to check that out. And for um, non-physicians, if you hadn't had a chance to look at that guide, it's a free gift. It's just, there's obviously going to be some peptides on there that we don't have access to anymore, so I'll have to update that guide for you. Um, but it's still really interesting to know all the different things that peptides are so great for. It's drheather.net slash peptology guide. So I actually have Sean here with me. I'm so fortunate that he was able to be in studio with me today. It's very hard. It's very hard for me to be able to see where your questions are while I'm actually doing the broadcast. And I really enjoy the question and answer period. So hi, Sean. Hey, Dr. Heather. Uh, great stuff. <laughs> wow. We have a couple of questions, just a couple of questions. And I'll just mention that if you have a question for Dr. Heather about peptides, the new FDA changes, drop them in the comments now if you're watching this live. And we will try to get to as many as possible. We only have a couple minutes left here on the live stream. Dr. Heather's very busy this week, <laughs> uh, but she would love to answer your questions. We do have a couple questions. And the first one is from Peter. And Peter asks, so why does the FDA want to regulate peptides, but not the supplement industry as a whole? Supplement industry is full of bad products, i.e. fillers, lower doses mm -hmm. than manufacturers list in their bottles, et cetera. I know you are passionate about this, I, Dr. Heather. I am so. so passionate about this. And I would love to know that answer <laughs> because there's, there's just... You're right. The supplement industry is a wonderful industry when it's done to help people um, and when it's done right. And, um, and when it's not, when there's no way of knowing, you know, what, what quality this is and, and if there's really what they're supposed to be in it, um, it, it's very, very frustrating. So I feel your pain. That's, I, I'm so, um, no, I'm just utterly so choosy about which companies I will um, recommend to my patients because for that reason, I, I cannot answer you why the FDA doesn't have any purview over the supplement industry. I, <clears throat> my educated guess, and that's all it is, is that it has to do with which area that particular industry falls into and it's it somehow is not um it's certainly not getting the uh, attention that the <laughs> peptides have been getting so i but that's a good question if i actually have an opportunity to speak um to the fda and i have spoken to the fda before actually um on a, on a different issue so i think you know knowing um knowing a little bit more about about what they're looking at and what you know what they're trying to do is really helpful especially for physicians like me who are on some of this cutting edge therapies and um, being able to, to you know, follow where everybody is, especially with the um, regulation stuff. And if I ever do get a chance to get an answer, I will make sure to, to share that with you. In the meantime, I think letting the general public know that it's really matters, like CBD is a good example. CBD, they, um, the Consumer Reports, I believe, was the one who did a big article about how the varying levels of what was in the bottle versus what was on the label off the things that were purchased off the internet is really where their focus was, was just all over the map. So um, a lot of people don't know that if you combine magnesium and a calcium product, they think they're getting a whole big dose of magnesium along with their calcium. And really that magnesium is being helping the calcium to be absorbed. And 
you should be standing using kind of a standalone magnesium product. So there's all kinds of things that's really hard for um, p- patients to know and people to know. I do think, though, that um, if you're going to you know, spend the money and take the time and make the effort to be taking a supplement, that hopefully somebody has given some guidance on that supplement. And I will remind you, I don't need to go too long on this question, but there is some advanced lab work that can actually show you what your levels look like inside the cell for your B vitamins, for your magnesium, even your glutathione. Um, and it's, it's something that we do here at the Regenerative Institute, um, and a lot of practitioners use that test. So if you're really wondering, hey, I'm taking these vitamins, what are my levels not in the plasma, but actually inside the cell? That's that bioavailability. There is some testing that could be done um, for that. That's how the MD prescriptive line was developed using that test. So I know it's a long answer, but I feel (laughs) you. I feel the same way. Yeah, and I would just mention, uh, I'll drop this link as well in in the chat, uh, in the comments below. If you would like to order... uh, supplements that uh, Dr. Heather recommends that she uses and prescribes to her patients as well. If you go to drheather.net slash supplements, that will, uh, you can order supplements from MD prescriptives Mm -hmm. directly through her website and, uh, and maybe you can mention just a couple of those supplements that uh, yes, you because MD Prescriptives is a medical grade supplement company, so they provide doctors with um, the with the supplements to be able to, pr- to provide to our patients. Um, and there's a very specific regimen that we put together for patients. But um, it it is a very very well made tight supplement line. It's what I take. It's what I have all of my family take. It's been very well studied, very well tested. They have a couple of different multivitamins, one that's very robust and one that's a little bit more of a standard multivitamin. They have a magnesium product. They have a probiotic. This probiotic is amazing. It has all of the strains that you need in your gut, not just the the big two. What we found is that only with the big two, you're missing a whole lot. You really want to have a more well-rounded, complete probiotic product. uh, The prebiozyme is the um, digestive enzyme, the Gosh, um, we have uh, greens. If you're not a big greens eater, um, there's uh, you can actually get nice concentrated greens. There's um, oh, there's so many. So there we've got a DHEA in a sublingual form or a um, a capsule and um, omega three. There's uh, there, it's not a huge supplement line, but it's going to cover um, all the bases to keep you healthy. Lisa has a follow-up question to what you were just talking about, and she says, what is that test called that you had mentioned? It's, a, it's an intracellular micronutrient test. <laughs> wow. <laughs> intracellular. Micronutrient test. Okay. Mm-hmm. There you go, Lisa. A <laughs> uh, couple other questions. Like I said, Dr. Heather's just going to be here for a couple more minutes. If you have questions, please jot them in the comments below. Another question that was asked a little bit earlier, and I'm pretty sure you answered this. I've been uh, in several groups kind of sharing your stream, et cetera, but I believe you answered this question. Uh, it was from Amber. She said, uh, Thank what you. about uh, what about CJC impamorelin? I believe you said, no, that's not going to be available, but there is a topical. Is that right? For No. no I'm, the topical I'm the is one. copper GHK. That's copper. Yep. Um, unfortunately, for now, the CJC-1295 and the ipamorelin, individually and together, are not going to be available. Um, we are looking, uh, I, I work with the, the major peptide um, society, and I, I work with the, pep, the peptide people. Um, this has been my passion for so long that they, they know me. <laughs> we, we communicate. I'm really fortunate to be getting a lot of information as it's hitting the bricks, and um so we're going to actively be looking to try to put a study together to be able to bring those peptides back. Right now, we're not we're not quite there yet, um, but we do. Tessa Morellin is still is is on the market and available uh, by prescription only, obviously. Um, and there's going to be a, a resurgence. We're coming back with a Sermorellin product in a combination with glycine, which, as I had mentioned earlier, um, 
Sermorellin is a, is a growth hormone releasing hormone and it is FDA approved. So we're going to be working with that. We, you know, a lot of us went to CJC up in because the potency, the growth hormone pulse was much longer. It was, it was really great, but we just don't have that right now, but we don't have nothing. And that's really good. And I think we're going to really start to look at optimizing how we can use um, the Sermorellin glycine combination. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Okay, Tanya asks, is FGL going away? Yes. Okay, maybe we can share a little I'm bit sorry. about what is FGL and uh, it's, why that would be something that, uh, it's just on no, the list. It's just on the list, yep. It's unfortunately, it's, it's, it's going away. Um, I don't know if there's plans to put FGL under an IND or an IRB first. Um, I have not heard that. Um, so is um, MOT SC, which those of you that may know what that is, that's also um, being taken off our our list. So we're not going to be able to use that one either. Okay, we had another <clears throat> question from Kathleen, and I, I asked uh, if Kathleen would clarify this. Maybe you know what she's asking. If not, Kathleen, if you're in the sound of my voice, uh, if you could uh, clarify uh, her, her question, I'll just read it exactly word for word is okay. thymosin beta four cannot be prescribed for professional athletes question mark. That's correct. It is on the no fly list with WADA. Okay. Maybe you can explain why, why that is. If you know, uh, uh, what is there about professional athletes that, uh, well, so, um, I'm not a WADA expert, but I will tell you that most of the peptides are not allowed on um, for professional athletes. And it's because anything that's considered performance enhancing is not allowed. So um, exogenous testosterone obviously is not allowed and peptides that allow an athlete to recover faster, more completely, um, or anything that's, that's performance enhancing are, are considered an unfair advantage. Does that help? <laughs> I mean, it stinks because we don't want our athletes to be injured. And that's why, you know, it seems, but, but it, it is what, you know, they're, they've got a big job. So I get that. So Amber just commented, uh, saying, and I think this represents a, a big population in the community. And she just said, this is horrible. I know, Amber, I know. Now, Dr. Heather, you've been working, like you said, with TaylorMade and with other compounding pharmacies, uh, with lots of people in the industry at the very, yes. high, the very high level. And this has been coming for a little while, uh, not that long, but it's not been coming long. for a little while. Uh, at the first, you were very shocked, you were frustrated, you were disappointed. Um, but now you are starting to feel there's some hope in, in some ways that we're moving forward. And I, I guess I, I'm sure some people would love for you to share some of that hopefulness, uh, some workarounds, and uh, how you got to the place where you are now. Mm. Uh, then, you know, where I'm just you crying were. My sleep, myself to sleep every night. Good <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know. Uh, well, I, I will say this. Um, we, we haven't lost all of our peptides. I mean, it, I, I like to always think of it as it, it, it could be worse. Do I think this should be happening? Obviously, no. But, um, but I could never put myself in a position of a governmental agency and all the, th the moving parts and everything that they need to do. Um, I, there is a, a significant amount of peptides being purchased off of the internet that are, could potentially be very dangerous. Um, and there's, so the, the need to try to understand this better and keep people protected, uh, I understand that. Um, and I'm sure there's other implications with some of that verbiage that peptides came under that, but maybe there were other things that needed to come under that as well. There's so many things that we probably won't know about it, but I will say that we're allowed to study them. We're, you know, hopefully we'll be able to band together as, um, as physicians and, organizations to try to get these studies underway and we'll be able to publish more data. Data is always something that um, the physician community and the scientific community and the general population, they really like to see that. And um, I, I kind of feel that um, having more physicians actually trained in peptide medicine to be able to offer it and not just kind of, well, you know, somebody asked for it and it seems okay. And, you know, really getting a nice training and a nice understanding of 
how to use peptides, who to use them for, um, and why do they work, and those kinds of things. I think there's an opportunity for us to really hone in that that education, that training, and um, and then kind of go from there. I mean, I, I'm for sure I, some of the peptides that I'm, I'm just really, um, well, you know, frustrated and sad that we're not going to have access to right now, but um, but we're going to, you know, forge ahead and we're going to use. Um, focus on the peptides that we do have and get those studies up and running and, um, and just keep educating people about it. So, um, so I, I, you know, I don't know what else to say about it other than, yeah, I, I'm, you know, all of a sudden it's like, gosh, it wasn't one and then another. And it was a lot of them that went, that kind of went away right away, but we'll get there. We'll get there. And, you know, the industry, um, these peptide manufacturers that are really, um, digging in and, and looking at new peptides all the time, that is a booming industry with a few manufacturers that are actually um, doing that. So there's going to be new products that are coming to market, and we'll all know about them, and, and, and we'll all be in, you know, in the right way with it. So um, we're going to make lemonade <laughs> out of these lemons. Yeah, that... Sorry. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? I can hear you. You can hear, okay. Yep. My headphones just died. <laughs> oh. Uh, um, as long as you can hear me. So, so the good news is, though, that these uh, compounding pharmacies have not decided to quit, right? They are, oh, that was the problem. Okay, now you can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> These compounding pharmacies are not quitting. They yeah. are they are pressing forward. Yes. They're going to go through the regs that mm -hmm. they're putting in front of them. Whereas they could have just thrown their hands up and said, "Forget it. We're out of here. We're going on international only, or what have you." Mm -hmm. And uh, and um, so I, I think that's also a really bright spot because they they have the most to lose, but they also have the the ability to um, go through the legal steps. Mm -hmm. right? We're learning a lot. Um, you know, we're learning a lot through this process. And um, um, is, so, yes, they, they really are. You know, the, these companies that, um, these legitimate companies that are making peptides and providing them to physicians, they're very committed to the, the health benefits of the people that are receiving the peptides. Um, you know, I've, I've had the pleasure of, of spending time with some of these people and having meetings with them. And um, they're very committed to peptide medicine and making it available, making it um, safe and, and everything that needs to be done. So, yep, we're forging ahead. <laughs> so lots of people thanking you. Um, Thank you. Uh, Bob says he's taking notes. And uh, Robert just said, thank you for doing this. I'm sorry, Peter just said, thank you for doing this. And uh, um, Kathleen th saying, thank you, Dr. Heather. You don't, you just, you just don't see and hear that enough, uh, Dr. You. Heather. So I thought that's uh, really you'd nice. Like thank to know. you so thank much. You, thank you for answering my question, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, last call for questions. While we're waiting for the last call, those are the only questions that we have left. Again, uh, you have a special webinar coming up. It's going to be registration only, yep. invitation only, not a live stream like this. Mm -hmm. but it'll be invitation only for providers, physicians, and providers that are able to provide peptide peptide medicine in their practices. Tell a little bit more about that and how people can get on that live webinar, which will be a special invitation and launch to your new online course. Well, yes. Um, so, you know, I, 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 I know that we can get super technical sometimes, and I, I'm, I'm really trying to not do that in this forum so that I can, you know, it, it's just making more sense to people who aren't physicians and science people who, you know, the peptides are for everybody. They're not just for us to talk about in a scientific circle or in a medical circle. So, but, but for physicians, I wanted to be able to provide um, a, a forum to, to get a little bit nerdier and get a little geekier and talk a little bit more about the specific mechanisms and some of the research on some of these peptides. And um, so they can see, you know, I have a, a course, Peptology for Repair and Recovery, um, I have developed that course over years of use in clinic research um, that I've, I've read and read up on and investigated. And um, so, and, and it's, these are, have been used clinically 
very successfully. And that's how I cultivated that protocol. So um, I would like, you know, physicians to be able to learn how to use these um, in a way that combines them to get the best result at the end. So um, we're going to do a webinar that's um, an evening webinar next week that will be a little bit more specific about some of these peptides, a little bit more of the mechanism stuff and the, the technicality things. And then just kind of explaining, well, this is what the course that I put together, this is what you would walk away from. If you think that that's something that would be good for you or you're interested in, then at least you know that there's that training is available. There's not a lot of peptide training um, out there right now. Um, there's some, but there's not a lot. What I wanted to do was to a, a course that was kind of the whole package and, and so that people could know right away how to use that protocol um, and who, who it would be good for. So that's going to be on... Um, uh, if, you're inter uh, if you're interested in that, we're going to send an email, but um, you can also go to the drheather.net slash contact and the peptology peptide training if you're interested in that. Yes, I will drop that in that, that link in right now. One more time. It's at the top, but some are just dialing into the broadcast right now. So if you are a provider... Uh, and you would like access to that webinar, and someone asked, is the webinar free? Yes. Yes, it is. It is completely yep. free, but you do need to register. So go mm -hmm. to drheather.net slash contact. It's drheather.net slash contact, and check that box that says uh, uh, peptology peptide training. There's a little checkbox, peptology peptide training, if and when you click that box and fill out that form, very brief form, then you will be put on the list and we will email you early next week to let you know the date, time, and how you can register. Mm -hmm. And this is very exciting. Dr. Heather's been yes. working on this for months and she's so excited to finally be able to provide an online version of this training mm -hmm. that in the past was only accessible by in-person workshop flying here to mm -hmm. naples Florida, which she's still doing yeah. and you can register for those as well but uh those in-person workshops where you get more one-on-one -on -one time with her but uh, this will be uh, a very exciting launch that uh, we can't wait. Now, someone did ask, and I can't find who that comment was. Let me just look really quick. Uh, they asked our chiropractor, here it is, Amber asked, is a chiropractor considered a provider? Chiropractors, to my knowledge, are not able to, to write prescriptions, for, especially for controlled medications. So um, probably not. Um, a lot of chiropractors, though, work i i i you know i have a um i i have a quite a few chiropractors in my area that we take care of patients we're kind of part of the care team together and a lot of chiropractors do um not a, not in a go into business together but they they have a a clinical they work with physicians and with providers um as a team to um to help the patient but but to my knowledge uh, chiropractors don't have prescribing um, they don't, that's not part of their license is prescribing controlled substances. Okay. Now the questions are rolling in. Boy, every time, that, that, <laughs> ma those are magic words. Last call. <laughs> those are magic words. Uh, let's see. Okay, so here's a couple of specific peptide questions. Not about the training, not about FDA necessarily, but some questions about peptides. Is that okay, Dr. Heather? Do you need to go? We can do a couple. Yeah. Okay, we we'll yep. do a couple. Okay, so here we go. Um, one is, Dr. Heather, can peptides assist with the following? My natural path, uh, my natural path said after an organic acid test that I almost have no stress reserves illustrated by excessive use of adrenaline or non-adrenaline. Uh, so it's as if I'm in a post-adrenaline dump state perpetually. Any specific peptides to try? I know you can't give specific advice, medical advice here. Unfortunately, yep, it's not the forum that I'm allowed to give medical advice, but I will tell you that it sounds like um, it sounds like you are in a significant state of physiological fatigue, and yes, there are definitely peptides that could help with that. Um, obviously, among other things, but you're you're with a naturopathic doctor that's working with you right now, and um, yes, there's definitely uh, if if I'm understanding. From what you said, yes. There are peptides that can help with that. And yes. Connie has a similar question. You know, are there pe peptides for weight loss? Uh, and uh, what are you doing for pain? There are 
there are peptides for those. As there well, are. Right? There were more, <laughs> but, <laughs> but we still have some things in our armamentorium to help with both, yes. And in fact, your first course on peptology, uh, your peptology training, your certification and training course is on uh, uh, recovery, right? Mm -hmm. Pain, is it pain and recovery? It's uh, repair and recovery. There you go, repair um, and recovery. But I am very uh, experienced at working with pain, with patients with pain. That was actually what my um, subspecialty was in. And it's near and dear to my heart. Nothing sucks the joy out of your life like chronic pain or daily pain does. It's, um, it's very difficult for somebody to maintain um, positive anything. Um, it disrupts sleep. It disrupts relationships. It uh, limits really limits what you can do in your day and, and joy and quality of life. So um, I'm pretty dedicated to looking at all of, especially in the natural world, all these things that can help, which pe peptides are part of our natural system with pain. I wish we had everything that we had before, but maybe someday we will again, someday soon, hopefully. A couple of quick last questions. Tanya asks, she said, I missed the beginning, forgive me but is thymus and alpha on the list? Thymus and alpha stays, yay! yay. <laughs> and, uh, and Mary Beth is asking, where can we get a list of the peptides still available and the ones being removed? That's a really good question. I'm not sure if that list has been made public and available. Um, if it has, you could probably um, directly contact one of the peptide suppliers. Um, I, I just don't, I just not sure if it's been made publicly available yet. Um, so I, I'm, I'm it, but it will be if it hasn't been made publicly available yet, it will be. Uh, that's just not something I'm sure if it's been made public yet. Not sure how else to answer that. But yes, there's a definite list. There is a list. Just not sure if it's totally finished yet. Great. Couple last questions. Uh, Peter's asking, can uh, you repeat where to sign up for the course? The course is not available yet, uh, but to sign up for the webinar, Peter, just go to drheather.net slash contact and check that box. It says peptide training, peptology peptide training, and we will send you a link, an invitation to the launch and the course when it is available. Uh, Kathleen is asking, Sean, are you related to Ryan? Uh, no, if you mean Ryan Smith, uh, no, but I am related to Dr. Heather. <laughs> I am honored to be her big brother. Well, we're probably all related somewhere down the road. Yeah, right? right? You know? <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> but thank you for asking, uh, Kathleen. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, any final words, thoughts, Dr. Heather? Um, thank you again. I'm always so honored that you take the time out of your day to come and, and join me doing this. Um, it's starting to feel a little less awkward for me. Um, being, you know, when I first started, I was just so nervous and, um, you know, I just am not used to being on camera and things like that. But I, but the, I just so appreciate all of the feedback. I appreciate you helping me know where your interests are because ultimately I'm here to serve you and to serve my patients. And if I'm off in the woods talking about something that they don't have any interest in, I'm not really serving them very well. So I, it, it really matters to me and I appreciate it so much. I'm so grateful and, and just so honored by, um, by you coming and, and spending some time here um, in this forum with me in the middle of an afternoon on a Friday. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and um, we're gonna just stay really positive about now we're gonna move forward um, with, with what we have with peptides and it's still gonna be great. We still have some amazing peptides that, are, that do amazing things. So I think that's it for today. Thank you, Sean, for being here. Thank uh, you, so Dr. nice Heather. to be able to take questions. I really enjoy that a lot. And um, I'll, see, I'll see you next week. We're gonna talk, we're gonna do a little something different next week. So I'm um, really looking forward to that. I can't wait to tell you guys what, what we have coming up, so. Okay, have a wonderful weekend.